I recently wrote my latest book, Let Me Go, Breaking the Shackles of Insecurity. If there is anything that's plaguing lives today, it is insecurity. It has robbed people of destinies. It has robbed people of their marriages, relationships, because you cannot relate if you are an insecure person. People lose their jobs because of insecurity, lose their families, lose their businesses because of insecurity. And it has plagued many. If uh, you get up to the level of leadership and you're insecure, that's a taboo. Woe unto the people that you're leading because they're gonna fall into serious traps just because of the spirit of insecurity. I believe with all of my heart that this is a book that everybody needs to get a hold of because it's gonna help you know how to be single and okay, how to be married and okay, how to relate with your boss and okay, how to do life and be okay, because I tell you the truth, if you are not okay and if you're insecure, everything around you will be falling apart. And there are so many people that are asking themselves, why do I miss it? Why do my relationships always fail? Why do I always miss the mark? What am I going to do? Let me tell you, insecurity is a demonic agenda. And if you read this book, you realize it plagued many even in the word of God. You go to somebody like Saul, he was so full of insecurity. You go to somebody like Gideon, he was so insecure. You go to many people in the Bible that were absolutely insecure and you see yourself in it. And let me tell you, as a woman, if you're insecure, your relationships are not going to work. They are just going to be one hustle after another and you'll think something is wrong with you. But there's nothing wrong with you. You just need to deal with insecurity. As a man, you are going to be missing the mark all the time, losing on business all the time. Why? Because of insecurity. Get to know how to get rid of insecurity forever. Get a hold of this book. So today I want to give us wisdom nuggets concerning time. Hear me. The Bible says that see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. According to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and verse 16. And I want you to know that time is all we have. It is the greatest commodity. You know, many people think that the greatest commodity is money. No, it's not. It is time. So don't squander it. Don't waste it. Be very, very careful to redeem your time, even according to the scripture that we read. Because when you redeem your time, you're able to get so much done. Don't waste time with naysayers and rumor mongers and people that don't add any value to your life. Don't waste time watching things that will never change you. You know, life is about impact, okay? And if you're not making impact in somebody's life, then you're not using your time correctly. Because I tell you the truth, when you change somebody's life positively, it's the best gift that you can ever take out there. Number three, be bold enough to take a risk. Be bold enough to take a risk. We are talking about time. You must be a time manager. Be bold enough. Many people procrastinate and they wait. Oh, I'll start tomorrow. They push everything to tomorrow. Even if it's gym, you say, I'll start on a Monday. Today is a Thursday. Monday comes in the afternoon. Oh, I forgot. Let me wait till the other Monday. What happened to Tuesday? And Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so those are days. Start there. Be bold enough to take a risk. Dream big. By the way, let me tell you, the desire for safety stands against great dreamers. I want you to know that security is the first step towards stagnation. If you want to become a mighty person, then you must be able to go through risks in life. 
and take them and you will see yourself succeeding. Be bold enough to take a risk. Boldness in your dream is the first, second, third, 20th, 100th uh, most important thing in life. Boldness. If you dare nothing, then you must expect nothing. Be used for a mighty purpose. What is that mighty purpose? This is the time. Order your life. Order your time. Listen to me. Step out. Be bold enough, courageous to take that risk in Jesus' name. The surest way to happiness is to lose yourself to a greater cause than yourself. I'm telling you, I am so excited that God called me to the woman. And I was bold enough to step into the waters, even if I had no idea where he was taking me. I didn't know I could even hold two scriptures together. Which scriptures now? I had no clue. But God knew that if I can just step in, he will hold my hand and direct my path. Do you hear me today? I want you to know that you must be bold enough to allow the Holy Spirit to help you and guide you into greatness. And you know what? Start there and you will see. Get bold and step in and you will see God's goodness even over your life. To small thinkers, everything looks like a mountain. But to dreamers, every mountain looks like a molehill. And so I want you to know that if you can be bold enough to spend your time correctly, you can do great and mighty things that have never been done. By the way, the grandest things in some ways are the easiest to do. Why? Because there is no competition. People are too scared to step out. People are too scared to step in. And so it is a safe place. Why? Because there are very few people. They say only 10% of people in the world make it ever. They shine. Only 10%. 90% are procrastinating and, hey, if I start, what will they say? Who are they? Please tell us, who are they? Because people don't move because they will say, who are they? That's what you need to quantify so that you can be bold enough to step out and do what it is that God created you to do. Believe and trust that God will help you. He will enable you. What if I never stepped out? What about all the women whose lives I'm impacting till now? What about all the messages that I've preached in life that I never thought I would preach? What if I never got bold enough to step out? Who would I have affected positively? Nobody. And so I'm challenging you right now to spend your time right by number three, getting bold. Number four, start where you are. Number two, we'll start somewhere. Number four, start where you are. Everyone who got where they are had to begin where they were. Hear me. Many times we think of what we lack instead of looking at what we have. Remember uh, when, when uh, Jesus came and he would always ask, what do you have in your hand? When you read the Bible, you see what do you have in your hand. And Moses says, I have a rod. Start with it. What do you have? I have a very little oil. In fact, they were belittling the oil. That woman was like, I have nothing. She started by saying, I have nothing. Then she said, accept. Listen, that accept is what God will use. God is not looking for you to have these mighty, amazing things moving over your life in order for, to, for him to start with you. No, he will start with what you have. If you're called to sing and you cannot, you don't know how to do it, start there. God will help you and he will enable you. If you're called to write and you don't know how in the world to start, just start and you'll be surprised. So start where you are. Start where you are. We don't need more strength or more ability or more opportunity. What we need is to start with what we have. So stop ignoring what you can do. Using it gives you more. You know, many times you think, oh, wait until I get this. No, start with what you have. Start where you are with what you have and you'll be surprised. It's going to keep growing. Every, listen to me, listen carefully. Opportunities multiply 
when they are seized. Okay? They die when they are neglected. Watch this now. Every ceiling, when it is reached, becomes a floor. Every ceiling, when it is reached, it becomes a floor. So that's how you climb from level to level. What looked impossible, start. You will get there and you see, oh, you mean it was possible? And then you'll find yourself climbing higher and higher and higher. What am I saying? These are wisdom nuggets to get you to use your time wisely. You don't have too much time, okay? You don't have too much time. This is it. What you are procrastinating and waiting for tomorrow, start it now and you'll be surprised. Start where you are and you'll be surprised. Time and chance, the Bible says, happens to them all. So don't waste your time. Start where you are. You cannot control the weather. But guess what? You can control the moral atmosphere that surrounds you. So why worry about things that you cannot control? Why don't you take a hold of what you can? Get a hold of what you can control. And that's your time. You have time. Do what it is that God has created you to do. And I want you to know that create favorable conditions to start. Do you know you can change any atmosphere, by the way? Uh-huh, you can change any atmosphere. You're in charge of it. You can rise up and say, I refuse to wallow in self-pity again. I refuse to wait for people to come and help me. I refuse to be bitter and angry and look uh, 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 at people who are not helping me. You don't need them. You need to rise up and begin to move. You'll be surprised. When my husband and I started ministry, we were looked down upon. In fact, they were thinking, <laughs> people were laughing. Somebody even said, if they get more than 200 people, we'll know there is a God. Well, many thousands later, they have known there is a mighty God, not just God, mighty God. What am I telling you today? Don't wait to be pushed forward and for people to give you accolades and clap for you. It's not going to happen. No, 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 no. Just start where you are and forget about, you know, uh, all the negatives. Just rise up and you'll be surprised. Because listen to me, no matter how tough things are, some people just keep going. And no matter how easy things are, some people just will not start. May you not be the latter. May you be the former. That no matter how difficult things are, you will keep going in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, start somewhere. You cannot fulfill your destiny on what you intend to do. So start somewhere and you'll be surprised that God will back you up in a mighty way. Number five, stop at nothing. People who are going somewhere, I want you to know this. They all have one trait. They attract criticism. Hear me clearly. How you respond to criticism determines your momentum. Uh -huh. The person who never steps onto anyone's toes is probably standing. Hear me clearly. Learn to accept and expect criticism. Jesus was criticized. Who are you again? Who are you again? The son of God who had no wrong. Who came to get us reconciled back to the father. He had no wrong whatsoever. He was criticized. Who are you again? Remind me. You will be criticized. Don't spend your precious time on critics. It's a thousand times easier to criticize than to create. That's the reason they are criticizing. While they are criticizing, you create. Be more creative with every critic. Stop allowing criticism to stop you from moving forward. Let God help you to continue moving. Don't stop at nothing. Listen, mud is never thrown or stones are never thrown at, at, uh, at uh, trees with no fruits. No, you can't even see a dog chasing a stalled car. It chases a moving car. And critics, all they want to do is to stop you. They want to detour you and distract you. You 
don't have time. We are talking about time, eh? This wisdom nuggets are about time. You cannot waste your time on critics. Just because they don't like what you're doing doesn't mean it's not good. They will not like it. Critics are just that. They do, the creating is too difficult for them. And so they'd rather criticize those who are creative. And so today, hear me, restore your vision, revive your passion, reclaim your purpose, and keep moving on. Move on and do not allow anybody to stop you. The person who says it cannot be done should not interrupt the one who is doing it. Let me repeat that. The person who said it cannot be done should not interrupt the one who is doing it. Don't allow them to interrupt you. Hear me. A critic is a little girl who can't dance but blames the band for not playing well. Are you hearing? Stop allowing criticism to stop you from doing everything that you are created to do. Critics know the answers without having asked the question. <laughs> oh, a critic is a man created to praise greater than himself, but he is never able to find them. Hear me, a critic believes the chief purpose for sunshine is to cast shadows. Why would you waste your time with critics? A critic doesn't believe anything, but he still wants you to believe him. Don't allow critics to stop you. Move on and do everything that you are created to do. In criticizing others, you work over time with no pay. Critics are not paid. So why would you waste your time? with critics. Find your purpose and take care of your time. Time is of essence here. Yeah. We are talking about wisdom nuggets. Work with the construction gang, not with the wrecking gang. <laughs>